Hey everybody, uh, my name is Jonas and this is going to be a kind of a quick presentation on some things that you can do to help fight feedback uh, in your live sound rig. So what is feedback? Well, it's the sound that we just heard, but the textbook kind of definition is when a sound that's being played back is the same as a sound being captured we now have feedback going on. Um, so here's our microphone. And sound number one, so it's like a person's voice or guitar amp or drum or whatever it is that's going in there. It's going to go in there. Sound one then gets reproduced through a monitor. When that monitor plays the sound back, if it's close enough to where sound one is being picked up, there's our, there's our guy. It's very, very unpleasant. So what do we do to stop it? Well, we've got our microphone here. A little bit of understanding is going to go a long way as far as like why the microphone picks up sounds the ways the way that it does, and what we can do to help uh, kind of move it in the right direction. So the microphone polar pattern is the way that this microphone picks up sound. So it's the it's kind of the well you'll see it right here. Whoa! It's this pattern. So I chose uh, an SM58. SM58 has a cardioid polar pattern, kind of a heart-shaped pattern. The reason that I use it is because it's really common. And you can see that it picks up a ton off of the front end where, where a person would stand and very little off the back end where the monitor should be facing. So when we understand how the microphone picks up sound, it can help us better position it against, um, against where that sound is coming from. So preamp gain is going to be the first thing that you turn up on your mixer when you're turning up the microphone. It's going to be most mixers, it's the knob right on top. It'll say preamp gain or trim or something like that. That's, well, you'll see it's the easiest way to visualize this is that this is the size of the polar pattern. So as we turn it up, the polar pattern itself actually becomes bigger. It's catching more of what's going on in stage. It's, it's picking up more uh, and that's a great way to boost the volume but also got to worry about the feedback. So take a look at this next one. Your room has got a mind of its own too. So here's your room. And now we've got our microphone and we've got our monitor. And now we, they're faced correctly, which is great. Um, the back of the microphone should be facing the front of the monitor. But as the monitor plays the sound back, it's going to bounce around in the room and you're going to have some of that stuff creating feedback as well, depending on how we've got our, our, our stuff placed here. So, something to know as long as we're talking about the monitor, the aux channel volume, the, the volume knob that feeds that monitor, it's just the volume of the wedge and not the volume of the mic itself. So, I said that to say this, we need to be judicious about what you're turning up before you turn it up. Here's our monitor. And we're going to go ahead and turn it up so that it's nice and loud. And they say, oh, I can't hear myself. So you turn it up even louder. And then you've got your microphone and the polar pattern that it's picking up. Right now, not such a big deal. But there's your vocalist. And you say, oh, I can't hear myself. So you turn up their preamp gain. Uh-oh. Back again. So that's uh, knowing what we're turning up before we turn it up is really going to help us get some mileage out of the right way to do this. So important to note. Every microphone has frequencies that it accentuates. So does every monitor, so does every room. And they're all cumulative, meaning if you've got a mic that accentuates a certain frequency and the monitor does the same thing and the room does the same thing, they're all going to stack on top of each other. And that's where we're going to start seeing those feedbacky sounds come from. So there's another tool in the toolbox that we can use to help fight that. EQ. It's your friend. So here's an example of a 31 band EQ. Each one of these sliders is the equivalent of four notes on a piano. So that sound that I've been using in this slideshow is kind of a high pitched sound. Uh, so it'd be on the right side of our EQ. This is kind of like in the middle. But that, that slider right there represents four notes on a piano. So if you hear feedback kind of popping up, you can dip out those uh, the sliders that represent those notes and they'll get rid of them for you. 
When you're adjusting the gain on a monitor, subtractive EQ, meaning finding the bad notes and turning them down, is a great way of removing offending frequencies that are feeding back. It's also a nice way to preserve your original signal just by trying to notch out the bad ones. So, how do we solve the problem of feedback? A couple of really good solid ways of doing it. First one, if you understand the polar pattern and frequency response of your microphone, you're going to know a lot about what frequencies the mic will pick up better than others and what direction those frequencies are going to be coming from. So really, mic control is your best, most effective, and cheapest solution. You already bought the mic. Now it's just a matter of learning how to use it. So understanding that stuff is priority one. If you do that and maybe a room is a big problem or volume is a really big problem where you're at, the second thing to do is go out and grab an EQ and use subtractive EQ to change what you need to change. Keep the volume level up and the feedback level down. A good engineer uses EQ the way a surgeon uses a scalpel. You don't want to change a whole lot. You just want to get rid of the problem areas and go on with your life. So um, a quick note about some other things that are in the field that are designed to help you find feedback or can affect what's going on uh, with your stage. Feedback suppression units are wonderful. They're automatic notch EQs. So what they do is they scan the frequencies all the time and when they see something kind of popping up like what we've been listening to, they will automatically notch that out instead of you having to hunt for it uh, on your on your channels uh, on your EQ. A little bit about compression units. Compression is is a wonderful tool makes your quiet stuff loud, makes your loud stuff quiet. It can really improve your overall sound, but it can make fighting feedback very difficult because if it's making your quiet sounds louder, when your vocalist stops singing, the, that feedback sound is going to be the quietest note going into that microphone, and your compressor is dumb. It doesn't know the difference, and it will try to make that louder. So compression units are wonderful tools, they can be a little um, a little counterproductive when it comes to fighting feedback, but not any reason to shy away from them. Just, just be aware of how they work. Um, and a little word about gating units. And a lot of compressors will have a gate built into it. They're tremendously useful tools. Great way to remove unwanted signals from feeding back. So if you've got a compressor, and we talked about it's going to make that quiet sound loud and loud sound quiet. So as the vocalist kind of comes off of the tail end of their note, once it drops below a certain threshold, a gate is designed to, once once sound reaches a certain level volume-wise, so it's once it reaches a certain degree of how quiet it is, the gate will prevent any noise from passing through that. And so that can be a really useful tool to making sure that feedback is not, um, is not jumping all over you. That's it. So uh, hopefully you've got some really good, helpful tools um, in this little uh, little video of what feedback is and what some of the more effective ways to fight it are. Uh, that's all for now. Good luck.